Hi everyone. So it's been a while since we've had to do in-person classes for students. And because of that, I wanted to go back over how we do these WebEx classes, especially as some of the user interface for Cisco WebEx has changed. So I just wanted to do a bit of a refresher. These are classes in which the student is actually in place in the physical classroom, and we are using a shared microphone via our WebEx session that the professor of their class is usually wearing a lapel mic. And we are serving them captions via TextCast. So I'm gonna get right into how we go about doing that. So to do one of these classes, there's basically two pieces of information that you need to know. Number one is which WebEx account am I using in order to be able to host this class for the student? And number two is what the text cast stream ID is for their particular class. So um, with regard to the WebEx um, session, each class that you do is going to have one link for it for an entire semester. We set up the classes in WebEx on our end. The meetings are reoccurring throughout the entire semester. So whatever the piece of information is for that particular class, that's what the information is going to be throughout the semester. You can see here's a sample email um, from earlier uh, in the semester for one particular class. So TT, for this TTU MCOM class, go to blah, 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 log in as Texas. And then you'll note that every password for all of our accounts is the same, capital P, at symbol, SS, WORD1 right here. Um, you'll note that this one says to log in as Texas. We have a handful of different state named WebEx accounts. Obviously, each different session, so they don't overlap. One might be for Texas, one might be for Idaho, one might be for California. When you're seeing that um, name come up, don't be confused. You might be doing a college in New York. The login is Texas. It's just a placeholder so that we can use our different accounts. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the login Idaho to go with the particular test session that I set up. So once you've got your um, correct WebEx login, you go to rapidtext.webex.com, and I'll put a um, link in the description for this video below so that you can click through on it. But rapidtext.webex.com, it'll bring you to this site. Note that in the upper right here, it says sign in. And we want it to say sign in here. We want to make sure that this here reflects the actual login that you're going to use. Uh, why I'm saying that is it may remember a prior login if you have multiple classes that you're doing um, and it has retained the login from your past class. It's going to create problems. If you're logged in, for example, as Texas, it's not going to allow you to start your class if your class is for Idaho. So let me sign in as Idaho. I'll put Idaho in here under the username and under the password, I'm doing capital P, the at symbol SSWORD1. And I'm not going to check keep me logged in because what if I have classes for another session? So and then I'm going to click log in. Now it brings up my upcoming meetings. And I have my test session that I've created here. It's usually going to follow the same format. Name of the university. So it might say TTU or NVCC. Here it says example university. Name of the class. Here I'm saying WebEx class. And then finally name of the student. Usually just their last name. Here I've got Jane Doe. And you'll see that over here it says start. Now, if I went to the meeting list and I was logged in as Texas or some other account, you're not going to see start here. I just took a second to log out and you'll see now that instead of saying Idaho up here, it once again says sign in. You can see that I can see my class here. Example University, WebEx class, Jane Doe. But over here it says join. I will not actually be able to host this class and I will be able to join it. 
That is of no use whatsoever to us. In fact, it may not even let you join. It'll say the host hasn't started the meeting yet. This is problematic. Obviously, we have to be hosting this meeting in order to be able to share all the information we need to as the student. Again, we are acting as the host of this meeting, not the school. So if you saw something like this, again, go to sign in, go back to logging in as Idaho or whatever your particular login is, and you'll get to here where you can click start. And I'm going to go ahead and click start here. And it's going to say starting your meeting. And it'll bring you to a splash screen that looks like this one. Now, this is something that WebEx started to do recently, so you may not be familiar with this. This splash screen here is sort of like a lobby. This meeting is not started yet. It's allowing you to configure the meeting um, and make sure that your audio is set up, but the meeting isn't started. This can be confusing for people. But this meeting cannot be joined by the student yet. You have to click the Start Meeting button, which I'm going to do now. This is what it looks like when you're actually in your meeting. Um, pretty nondescript here because I'm the only person in the meeting, and this is what you'll see every time you join a meeting. You're the only person in there, so there's no content because there's no content until you share it. Um, there's no student in the meeting because they can't join until you do. Um, so a few things about this particular uh, WebEx session. Um, I'll just sort of show you around the basic functionality and then exactly what you need to do. You've got participants down here. This is useful. Uh, you want to be able to communicate with your uh, students sometimes. You can use the chat down here. These functionalities used to be in a different location. Here is where they are. If you don't see one of these options in the lower right, you may need to click on this little series of ellipses down here in the very extreme lower right, and that will bring up more options. Chat brings up chat. There's no one here, so there's no one to chat with. Participants brings up participants. You note that there's just me in this particular session. OK, what you want to do when you start the meeting, um, you want to make sure that you are muted to begin with. It will often default to you not being muted. The student doesn't need to hear your voice for any reason, and it could create difficulties in the classroom. So just if you see this green microphone um, jumping up and down, that means you've got a live mic. Just go ahead and mute it, and now you see the nice X through it. That's what we want to see. If you go back to participants, I've got a now a nice little microphone, red X, uh, through the mic next to the name of myself. If you had your student in here, it's good to recognize that mic symbol. We do not want to see the red mic hash through on theirs. It means that they're muted. Obviously, if they are muted, it does no good. Something to uh, talk to them about in chat. So we're in the meeting now. The first thing we want to do is share our text cast ID. You're going to have this information in the setup sheet for your client. You're also going to have it in the CMS page for the particular. Um, you can see it in the location field. It, it details what your text cast ID is. So I'll go into rapid caption. I, for now, I'm going to use stream03, but it would be whatever it's specified to be, just like with a whole bunch of other accounts that use TaxCast IDs. I'm connected now. You'll note that when I click connect to the TaxCast stream, maybe I should do that again. So I'm putting in stream03 here or whatever else you were told. No password here. There's never any password. And I'm going to click OK. When I click OK, it automatically copies where these captions are being outputted to, to my computer. So I'm going to go back into here, and I'm going to share that information with the student. So I go to Share, the Share menu at the top left, Share Multimedia, and I am right-clicking and pasting. Where did I get this? Where do you get this link from is a thing that I hear quite frequently. It just automatically gets copied the second that you click OK and join a TextCast stream. You can see that once I share a particular text cast, the multimedia viewer window pops up in the lower right. And um, 
shares whatever text I have on there. You can see that there's already text in the lower right from this particular meeting. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see. You can adjust these panels as much as you want. You can see that there's this captioning from a different test session that we were doing earlier. You do not want this uh, captioning in there for when the student starts the meeting, obviously. It's confusing. So I'm going to go back into Rapid Caption. I'm going to click Clear Captioning in the center here. And now this is cleared and in blue. Um, what we want to do is put something in there that indicates that they're actually in the right session. So I'll put, um, hi, something like that. So they know that they're in the right place. And I can confirm that my captions are going out here. The last thing I want to do is to make sure that I'm able to get audio. So to do that, I'm going to click, you see here where I muted my mic earlier, there's this little downward carrot. I'm going to click that for audio options. You can also do it from the audio and video menu, but it's easier here. And I'm looking, we've got our speaker set up here and our microphone set up. Again, we don't need our microphone, so we're going to ignore that. What we want to make sure is that our audio is coming out of whatever um, session, whatever particular hardware we need it from. So if I was using this G930 headset, I would want it out of there. If I'm using this Logitech headset, I want it out of there. If I'm using speakers, I would use this. You want to make sure it's on the correct thing so that you can hear. How do you determine before the student joins and there is no audio what the um, correct audio setting is? Well, you have to use the speaker and microphone audio testing. So to do speaker and microphone audio testing, I'm going to click the audio options. I'm going to go to settings. And where it's saying speaker, I'm going to click the test button. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but I assure you that in my ears, I heard a very loud um, sort of bell tone so that I know that I'm getting the audio through the correct place. I'm going to close this off. So that's what you want to do. Now I know I can get audio. I can see the captions. So therefore, the student can see the captions. And I have everything I need. As soon as the student joins, they're going to show up in this participants. And I'm going to go back to rapid caption. And I'm going to start captioning as soon as I hear what they are saying. As ever, <laughs> there are difficulties that somehow come up in these classes. When they do, I'm just going to go through a couple of the ones that you might see. So number one, classic one for anything to do with TextCast, you start captioning here. Um, you're on the right TextCast ID. It's not showing up here anymore once you start. This happened to me earlier today when I was doing a test. Sometimes the TextCast stream just goes idle for a while. Let's say your student joined late. might stop writing here. All you do is you go back into rapid caption. You click initialize. It's going to make you join again. It's going to make you join one more time. Basically, it kicks everyone else off, restarts the stream. I join up again. And then I can make sure that my captions are going through here. So that will fix most issues with TextCast. The other issue you're going to have is just poor audio. This is when you need to go into chat. So you click on the chat in the lower right, and you say, Hi there, um, your audio is quite poor. Have you made sure you are using the right microphone? And this isn't just uh, me making small talk normally. That is the most common issue. The student has a lapel mic that they've given to a professor, but they are using their computer's local audio. Um, and they, they haven't selected the correct audio setting. Um, if you have an issue and they're not able to fix it yourself, you would contact myself, Ray, Imi. We will join into the session and provide the student with some technical support. Um, but once you've done a number of these classes, you can even let them know, hey, go to your audio options. Can you check to make sure that the mic, right, mic, correct microphone is listed? Um, and has a check mark next to it. That is a very common problem we see. 
Um, the other thing that we'll see in the start of some classes is just uh, some students who just don't physically have the proper mic and their school is either unaware or that they need a better mic or is unaware that they don't have one or aren't using one. We need to know that so we can get on top of it immediately. Sometimes students complain that captioning is really bad. Well, the captioning is only as good as the audio we are receiving. So that is the long version of how to do one of these sessions. Um, I'm going to make a smaller version right now.